Uh, thank you so much. Um, thank you for organizing this conference. Thanks so much for having us. Very fortunate to be on this um, very impressive panel today. I will talk about regulating algorithmic decisions today, which is joint work with my colleague Laura Blattner and with Scott Nelson from the University of Chicago. I'm also posting a link to the uh, full paper in the chat. And as a trigger warning, this is a, one of those 50 page econ papers. So just that you know what you're getting into before clicking on that link. Um, so the background to my talk today is that many high stakes decisions rely on some prediction algorithms. And when these are deployed, they are often incentive conflicts between agents building prediction functions and principles overseeing their use. So typical examples would be in medical testing, for example, an insurance company that worries about overtesting in hospitals could be in hiring where an employer may be concerned um, about the equity of job offers made, or, and this is gonna be the example I'm gonna use in my talk today, in lending, where we also have an empirical exercise that I will show in the very end, where a financial regulator may be concerned, for example, about excess risk of models used by lenders or about the fairness of credit allocation decisions. And so our paper today is gonna be about the question, how should we regulate black box prediction algorithms that may be too complex to be described completely? And specifically, I will ask the question, how explainer tools that have become available over the past years can help address challenges in overseeing the fair and safe use of algorithms. To preview our main findings, um, we will argue that in a simple model that I will illustrate with an example today, um, restrictions that heavily restrict the functions that can be used ex ante, for example, restricting lenders to very simple models that are easy to describe, are typically um, inefficient as long as the misalignment between the agents is relatively small relative to the variation in the states of the world um, that I want to be flexible with respect to. Second, that algorithmic audits can align incentives if they are designed in the right way. And that's gonna be the focus of my talk today, where I want to talk about three ways in which these algorithmic audits could happen. And um, first of all, we could simply look at realized outcomes where we will argue that doing only that is limited. Second, we could use explanation tools where I will argue that the design of those um, explanation tools is gonna to be crucial to their success. Specifically, I will show that standard explainers that focus on prediction quality uh, may not be the right tool to use here, while targeted explainers that focus more specifically on the nature of misalignment and the nature of the specific problem that we want to address may be more successful. And I then want to argue that these insights actually matter by applying them on a large scale real credits um, bureau data set um, where we will discuss uh, implications for analyzing disparate impact. So let me set up our model and the paper is a very general model. Today, I want to use a very stylized model in the context of lending. The model has four stages. The first step is a rule setting stage where the regulator sets the rule of the game. Second stage is a training stage where a lender learns the relationship between different features available in the data and the probability of default, and then uses those to choose a, to choose a credit scoring function that is then used to allocate credit. In a third deployment stage, the consequences of deploying that function are realized. So for example, I'm using the credit score to allocate credit, and then I'm asking, what kind of disparities does um, that create or what kind of overall systemic risk does that bring with it? And the final stage is an audit stage where the regulator performs an audit and checks whether that allocation is compliant with the rules that the regulator set out and payoffs to the players are realized. So why could there be conflicts of interest here? We assume that there can be misalignment of preferences between regulator and lender. So specifically, I'm focusing on two examples here. I assume that there is some point that both may um, agree over, which here would be that the relationship that the lender learns from the training data set accurately um, represents the relationship between features and default. However, in addition to that, there may be some additional preferences that separate the regulator and the lender. So in this specific example, I assume that in addition to the um, credit score accurately refracting relationships with default, the regulator may also have a preference 
um, for an allocation that ensures that there is not too much or no disparate impact. While the lender may also um, be able to get additional profit, for example, from giving out subprime loans that may have a high profit margin, but in the um, eyes of the regulator may be problematic uh, or may be um, con considered uh, to exploit um, some of the um, lender, um, some of the borrowers that, that get those loans. And so that means that while these preferences are partly aligned, we assume that they have some parts that are misaligned where the regulator would want to choose a different allocation than a lender, but it's a lender who initially observes the training data set and chooses the complex prediction function, which creates a conflict of interest here. So the first thing we could do in this game that I outlined here would, to simply, would be to simply observe the outcome that actually is realized. And for example, audit based on the realized consequences. So think of this as I wait until the allocation of credit has happened. I wait until the lender has given out credit. And based on that, I audit, for example, I punish the lender if there's excess, excess disparate impact or if there's an excess number um, of defaults among subprime loans. So in our model, it turns out that auditing only based on realized consequences without any deeper understanding of how the allocation has happened is generally inefficient. So why is that so? That is because a bad outcome, which I'm signifying by those um, frowny smileys on the right here, could either be due to the lender having taken a choice that we don't like, having chosen a bad prediction function, or it could be due to a random realization of the state of the world where, for example, we're going into a recession, everything gets systematically more risky, therefore there's excess risk. It doesn't have to do anything with the choice of the lender, but is only due to external circumstances. And therefore, if I were to regulate only based on the realized consequences, that would enforce an overly conservative choice by the lender that would generally be not in the interest of the regulator because it would actually reduce rather than increase welfare. So therefore, I now focus on other tools that we could use in order to restrict the choices made by the lender and align them with social preferences. One thing I could do is, for example, simply restricting functions ex ante. For example, say, well, I don't actually want you to use very complex machine learning tools because they are problematic. Said I want to use you to use very simple functions that I've restricted to reduce, for example, their disparate impact. So relative to the case of not restricting the choices of, at all, which lead to very low or no alignment, such ex ante restrictions would be able to align the choices. However, they come at a cost of flexibility. And I don't mean like efficiency in a profit way here. I don't mean we are trading off efficiency. I only care about welfare in my case. But what I mean by that is that if we restrict the function ex ante, then the lender can't actually find very good prediction functions, can't find very good credit allocations, and can't adapt to the world as it is and the training data as it is, which may actually destroy welfare. And so in that case, while this may align preferences, it may actually destroy a lot of welfare um, by being overly rigid. Therefore, I now want to focus on a second policy tool we could use, which is using explanations. So in our model, we assume crucially that the prediction function that is fit by the lender in training is too complex to be described completely. But we assume that there may still be a possibility of learning something about it by using some explanation of that. And the nature of explanation in our model is that it is a low dimensional representation of the complex function. So in this very stylized example, the fully complex model is simply four dimensional and the explainer is a two dimensional projection of that four dimensional model. But you can think of this more generally as a complex machine learning model that I try to explain, which is inherently a dimension reduction in the complexity um, of the description of my model. And I now ask, how can an audit based on such an explanation help us to improve welfare? And the first choice that I want to point out here is that when we write a simple explainer for a complex model, we inherently lose information, which, is, which means that we lose information about some dimensions of the model while preserving some other models. And there's therefore inherently a choice how we do that. For example, in this two dimensional, um, in this um, four dimensional example with two variables where our explainer is two dimensional, we could, for example, cut the data either by one of the variables or the other of the variables, leading to two different kinds of explainers that focus on two different aspects of my model. 
Specifically, we focus here on the one that preserves most of the predictive information, which would be the typical way you would do that if you ran an off-the-shelf explainer tool, versus one that is more targeted and focuses on specific aspects of the model that are relevant for the welfare outcome and the misalignment of interests. And in that context, we show that using that prediction explainer partly aligns choices um, while preserving a lot of flexibility because I'm not restricting the choices of the lender ex ante. However, this is still inefficient because the typical explainer focuses on the first order behavior, but not necessarily on the first order source of misalignment. If instead we use an explainer that is more targeted towards the source of misalignment, we can both improve our alignment and we can at the same time um, ensure that there is still enough flexibility. So what's the main takeaway from our model very intuitively? The main takeaway is that the moment that we are not able to fully describe a complex model anymore, we inherently lose information when we use simple explainer tools. And when we use those tools in regulation, it is therefore important that we keep the right information and don't lose the wrong one. So specifically, when we think of this complex model, which I've signified by this like fully interacted model here, there are different ways of simplifying it when I think of simple explanations. And those will not be the same for regulation. And those may also be different from what I would want to do if I simply want to describe the first order prediction behavior. To convince you and to wrap up my talk, that this is actually uh, meaningful, we now implemented this um, on a large scale um, credit data set, where in this case, our data set has 50 million um, uh, credit applicants, but we are only using a 50K subsample for computational reasons in those preliminary results I'm showing you right now. And here I'm considering a lender who simply wants to minimize prediction loss, a regulator who is interested in well-fitting prediction functions, but also has some additional social preference. In this case, the regulator wants to ensure that there is no excess disparate impact. And then we um, consider a lender who rather than just minimizing prediction loss also has the constraint that their explanation must conform with a, an explanation that the regulator agrees with. And um, we construct our explainer with a simple linear proxy model here where variables are chosen by lasso, either in a prediction optimized way by predicting default or in a more targeted way where we predict group membership. Um, and we implement this with a neural net um, with two hidden layers and 40 neurons on 50 covariates and contrast that with a very simple model. Um, and our main question is now, how is that gonna affect both the fit of our model and how is it gonna affect disparate impact, which we define here um, as the average um, difference in credit scores that is achieved for minority versus non-minority applicants. And here are the main takeaways from those numbers that I won't have time to go over in full detail. First of all, our complex model with an explainer can improve welfare relative to a simple model. And um, so in other words, going from the case where I use a very simple model, which would be like a very um, restrictive way of restricting a lender to the full neural network actually improves welfare. Second, those more complex models upfront come with a cost because they allow for larger preference misalignment because there's now more flexibility in the choices of the lender there may be a larger room for increasing disparate impact um, that may be problematic. However, our targeted explainer here is able to close that gap and achieves basically a level of disparate impact that is similar to the one that the regulator wants to achieve in the regulator's preferred option, while also leaving the choice of the complex function to the lender. So let me now summarize. Um, first of all, our paper happens in a broader context of discussions around fairness, but also explainability, interpretability, and transparency of algorithms that we think are central to safe and fair implementation of machine learning. However, these terms often lack a very clear definition. So we all agree that explainability, interpretability, and transparency are good properties to have, but it's not necessarily clear what exactly those terms mean in a specific context. So we try to tackle that question in one specific application, specifically in an economic model with a principal agent conflict. And we answer the question how we should regulate black box algorithms 
that are too complex to be fully described by saying that we should regulate them based not just on explainers, but on specific targeted explainers. Um, and with that, um, thanks a lot again to the organizers for having us um, and thanks to the audience um, for listening to our talk. <laughs>